If you are preparing for tech interviews mainly for product based or fan companies still getting rejected this video might hurt you a little but it will also help you learn this method that has helped me crack multiple offers from big tech giants and startups most people fail interviews not because they are bad engineers or not good at dsa or system design but because they prepare in the wrong way i work as sweetri at google i have worked with companies like amazon walmart hilabs aws and also been co-founder and ceo at a very early stage startup called myjob.ai i have given many interviews I have failed some, but I have cracked many. To be precise, I have cleared more than hundred interviews and grabbed offers from fan companies. So what I am sharing today is not just a theory; it's what actually worked based on my interview experiences. I was a very average guy from a tier three college who never dreamed of working at such big companies like Google, Amazon, or building his own startup. And I believe strongly believe this: if I could pull this off, then you can too. That's why I am here to tell you. about this method which has helped me and will help you prepare better develop a mindset that will help you in a longer run but before that let's talk about what's going wrong in your preparation and why you might be failing your tech interviews again and again stay a little longer and i'll share this method in next few minutes so let's discuss the core problem most engineers don't fail at interviews they fail at interview preparation what usually goes wrong is solving random dsa question on lead code or following random linkedin's bhaiya didi dsa sheet watching random system design videos or maybe binge watching some playlist thinking that if i'm done with this playlist this will be enough for my system design job which is wrong and also adding random things to the resume that they have never worked on not doing mock interviews or self audits which leads to anxiety and poor performance under pressure in real interviews also poor communication of thought process which is actually missing as a soft skill which is required in an interview not aligning your preparation with the company or the role expectation that you are appearing for and i often hear this in my linkedin dms a lot if i solve 3 to 400 lead code problems will i be able to crack interviews or if i practice these many hld already question will i crack the system design rounds or just the design rounds no this is wrong interviewers don't test how much you studied before appearing in this interview they test how you think how you explain and how you adapt in real time especially during when follow ups are asked and when there is a lot of ambiguity in the problem statement so now let's quickly list down the reasons why we fail in interviews from the main reason behind it to the most common excuse that i've been hearing and then we can discuss this method which will change your preparation style and will also increase chances of you clearing the interviews reason 1 wrong preparation strategy this is the biggest reason people fail most candidate prepare randomly a random dsa question learning from random youtube video random system design videos courses blogs medium blogs subreddit what not and all i can say is there's no clear plan people don't fail because they don't know how to code or implement they fail because they don't know what the interviews or interviewers are expecting out of you this is especially true for switches which are done from service based to product based from low ctc to a high ctc switches they study a lot no doubt in that but they study the wrong way or they might be studying the wrong things reason 2 poor explanation skills many candidates give correct solution or the most optimized solution by the end of the interview but still gets rejected and people think why why did this happen i i gave the right solution this was the most optimized solution and i have verified it as well but do you know why this happens because they don't explain their approach these kind of explanations are necessary like why this approach why not the other one what are the trade offs between different solution let's say there is a dsa problem which has two different solution let's consider two sum problem the one solution has a order of n square time complexity and constant space where you put a two for loop and try to generate all the possible combination and then see if i'm meeting the target sum and the other solution is where you bring some extra space using hash map and reduce the time complexity by directly looking up in the hash map there's a trade off that you need to explain also what will happen at scale in design rounds corner and edge cases are missed they present solution sometime yeah this is even i have experienced it multiple times while taking interviews the candidate present this solution as if they have memorized them which mostly happen in dsa or system design round which puts a bad impression interviews care more about thinking out loud if you stay silent for too long or jump straight into coding without discussing your approach the interviewer gets no signal and feels disconnected reason 3 system design confusion most candidate fail system design interviews for a very basic but very important reasons some of these are not spending enough time on functional and non functional requirement i see candidates spending less than 5 minutes on it which i believe is less also not asking clarifying questions not doing perfect requirement gathering jumping straight into designing system or into the direct solution avoiding trade offs between multiple approaches these are some of the very important and the top 3 reasons 
people are getting rejected in their system design runs. Reason four, the preparation mindset also alert to it interview anxiety. Just only subtle, but people treat interview like exams. They think one mistake and it's done. I'm rejected. But no, due to this they panic. But they don't understand that interviews are more like discussions that you and your interviewer does, not exam. That if you make one mistake and you are done, definitely you are being judged on your mistakes and you might score less. But interviewers actually expect is. you making small mistakes and catching them during the dry run of a solution making correction or fixing the bugs iterating more than once before actually submitting the code or the system design that we done so far discussing to and fro with the interviewer bringing you both on the same page you should keep asking to your interviewer are we on the same page am i understanding the correct problem statement is that what the expectation is these kind of questions are necessary if you're not doing you're missing something also let's discuss what kills candidate is defending wrong answer or being too rigid on the correctness of a solution getting stuck at a point and not asking for hints not adapting or appreciating interviewer's feedback on a solution these are some of the points that a candidates need to keep in mind while appearing for interviews reason 5 i don't have time this is the most common excuse i hear most successful candidates prepare 1 to 1 and 1/2 hour per day the problem is not time the problem is no or poor preparation plan no focus while studying or getting distracted easily procrastination and lack of consistency too much comfort in your current role pay band or ctc not having the right mentor or the guidance that is required for the interview preparation so now let's talk about the method you have been waiting for it's not a secret tip it's not a secret sauce it's simply how i prepared and it's okay if you don't like it at all just to set the expectation i cracked walmart and various other companies with less than 2 days of preparation because i exactly knew how to prepare using this method and you might ask how let me explain this method step by step and you can skip some steps if you already know them step 1 fix the target company that you are preparing for when it comes to switching to a different company you should keep in mind these below points what's the role for example if you are switching from sd1 to sd2 or sd2 to some manager role like sdm or front end role to back end role or a complete role switch from let's say to pm or tpm you need solid reasoning and artifacts for this kind of switches where you are trying to switch to a different role rather than climbing up in the ladder what kind of company product do you want to work with in your next role like e-commerce healthcare robotics and etc this might be a big concern for many but i do consider this to add variety or to increase exposure in my career by working in different domains last and very important question What is your expectation in terms of salary or CTC hike? Do a good research on what is the current industry benchmark for your role and the experience you are currently holding. For this use case, I use levels.fii and recent lead code compensation discussion sec- section of it. This will give you a fair idea on how much you can expect and will definitely help in salary negotiation in HR round. This will help you filter out companies that don't fall under your radar or ex- expectation. hence bringing a clear target in your preparation and when your target is clear i believe your preparation becomes sharp without this you are just staying busy but not productive or effective step 2 stop counting lead code question solved or total number of question solved for a particular interview a very common question that i get in my linkedin dm is how many lead code questions should i solve is 3 to 400 enough that question is useless because you can't predict what can be asked to you but you can get the probability of what being asked more frequently for a particular company say meta i recently shared a meta interview experience you can check it out all the questions were predictable because i had solved them in my preparation journey or my preparation time let's say dp or graphs it is asked more by fang and product based companies so practice those more so what matters is can you recognize patterns under pressure or can you code implement discuss your solution within 45 minute or time constraint or let's say 60 minutes so what i majorly focused on was one pattern at a time all dsa question can be categorized into 10 or less patterns mainly binary search sliding window dynamic programming or recursion graph entries two pointer greedy algorithms constructive algorithms and then few problems per pattern before hitting the interviews for each pattern i used to solve 10 to 15 problems say i will solve 10 to 15 sliding window problems and then move to the next pattern so the focus here is quality over quantity 
So start with blind 75 or need code 150 because it will act as an icebreaker in your DSA preparation time. The third one is very, very, very important. Think out loud. Most rejection happens here because interviewers can't see you thinking or logical reasoning. So I trained myself to speak while solving problems at all the time, even when I'm practicing. So listen it carefully. Silence kills interview. Perfect code will not save you later. Once I fixed it, feedback improved immediately. Step four, system design the real way. I stopped memorizing architectures for popular or commonly asked system design patterns or problems. Instead, every design started with a question like this. What is the main problem? Spending enough time, let's say five to 10 minutes in gathering the right functional and non-functional requirement, putting out out of scope requirement would help you to actually decide what is going to be solved or what is going to be designed in the next 45 minutes. Discussing what is a scale. When you know that you are designing a system for more than a million customers, you have a better clarity. You have to also discuss what are the trade-offs. Remember CAP theorem or its advanced version, Packle theorem? Consistency over availability. Yes, you need to fret on this because this helps you understand the product better in terms of whether you whether your system demands low latency or high availability. Because memory is cheap, but latency is expensive. Remember this thing. As an SD2, you should always fret on latency. Interviewers don't want fancy designs or boxes and arrow that you draw. They want clear decisions or reasons behind your choices like why a NoSQL database fits better here rather than a SQL database. Also, I have started a system design ladder series that will help you learn what exactly needs to be learned for a system design learn. I will be soon coming up with an LLD playlist as well that will help you crack any machine coding. When I say it, any, literally any machine coding or LLD rounds. So stay tuned and subscribe to get notified. Let's come back. Step 5. Resume is a part of your prep. I didn't treat my resume as a formality. Many people do. Every time when I had to apply to a company, I changed my resume a little bit to align it with the expectation from the JD, the job description. Every line on my resume was something I was ready to defend in an interview. If I couldn't explain what and why of any pointer in my resume, I will simply remove it. Your resume is your face, so don't lie on your face. Ask this to yourself. Do I have my resume prepared before applying? Prepare a resume based on the company you are targeting rather than keeping a single generic resume that will not fit for all the jobs you are applying. Change it to add keywords that will help your resume to pass the ATA system or manual filtering which is sometimes done by HR. For example, while applying for Amazon, I would have added more AWS related knowledge into my resume to add more weightage. Sometimes your resume decides the direction of your interview. I'll give an example, a real life example from one of my interview at Amazon. From my Amazon system design round, where the interviewer asked to design what was mentioned exactly in my resume that was distributed rate limited. Step six, mocks with feedback. Mock interviews are more important than your real interview, more and more. And I mean it when I say it. After every mock, you know, what did I do wrong? Where did the things go wrong? Where did I make mistakes? Where did I confuse myself? Where did I overcomplicate it? Once you know this, you get more confidence. Without a mock, you will be like that gym guy who always skips leg day. Step 7. Preparation with a full time job. I have been asked this question hundreds of times. How do you manage your time to prepare for interviews along with your 9 to 5 full time job? To be honest, oh, we never have had enough time. Most days, it was 15 to 30 minutes or max to max 2 hours on weekends. Or sometimes I had to skip because of developer life, right? But I always stayed consistent. And I can say that consistency is the key here for me. Short, consistent, structured beats, long weekend run. So try to be really, really consistent no matter what time and what day you're preparing. So before we close, this method works because interviews are very structured. Interview question patterns repeats. Mistakes are predictable and fixable by giving mocks. Some days you'll feel slow. Some days you'll feel dumb. That's normal. I have been there while preparing for interviews. If interviews feel scary, your preparation is probably weak. So you need to work on that. This method can improve your chances of landing better roles and companies. So let me know in the comments what you want me to talk about in my next video. See you then. Bye.